The reality is we are a billion dollar a year school district serving about 104,000 kids. The huge number of those kids are children uh, in poverty. When we looked at Milwaukee, what we saw was nearly half of the kids unable to graduate. Every single school, there was a gap in achievement between black and white kids. People couldn't do basic math, all these other sorts of things. It was really raising some serious questions about the future of the city. Inner city schools are some of the most expensive public schools on a per pupil basis in the United States. However, they are not great schools to which to send your child. But the problem that we had was that there was no other game in town. See, if you didn't like public schools, you had no place to go. Basically, you had a situation where being a parent in Milwaukee really limited your choices, and you didn't have much power. We need to change the dynamics of how education is delivered to the families in this city. What we are currently doing does not work for large numbers of children, and I don't think, as a society, we can accept that. So in my mind, what's at stake is, is the very foundation of our democracy. Billy, you know what, Billy? The game's gonna be here when we get back. I just felt okay. like we were all just like stuck in the mud. We we're getting nowhere. You're gonna have to change out of the white jacket, Billy. Billy was not doing well in school. He was not happy. He was in second grade at the time. Been to his school repeatedly and tried to work with the teacher to improve the situation at school. Things were getting nowhere. And I thought, you know, there's got to be something better out there for them. I often told parents, we can put a master teacher in every classroom, but you're the person who has to dream the dream for your child, and if you don't do that, the master teacher can't do it, the principal can't do it. So it really is about a partnership, but it's hard to have a partnership when one of the partners doesn't have any power. If you were just a parent who wasn't willing to get out and struggle and fight the system to make sure that your child was going to get into one of the better schools, then you probably ended up with an assignment um, in a school where not a whole lot was going on. Uh, there was probably going to be some violence in that school. To me, it looked like the same situation under which I went to school in, and I just saw it as doom. I'm like, I don't see any hope in this situation, and I, I need to find something else. What I think we've adopted is a view that public education and the public education system are the same thing. And what I would argue is that public education is a concept. How you deliver public education, we could do that in a variety of ways. What was really important to me was to have the system change so that it focused on satisfying parents and not just on the needs of the system. Now what school choice has done in a very natural way, it gives parents more power to do what they really want to do, which is to have their child have the best education they can find. My favorite class is English. I'm good at writing, like right now in English class, this is one thing I really like about it. We're doing a play. So I'm a, I like made up the play off the top of my head and then I wrote it down and I typed it up on the computer. Like I said, I'm working just part time. I was laid off this summer. so. If the choice program was not available to me, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be there because I, I wouldn't be able to pay for the school. See, choice is not the issue in America. It's who has it. Because those of us with money, if, if a public school is not working for our children, we will move to a community where it does work 
or we will put our children in private schools. One of the principles of this is that you know, parents have the power and the ability to choose and it's not a myth, it's real. I can take this check to a school to educate my kid and if I don't like the job they're doing, I can move that kid with those resources to another school that will respond. Bye, Billy. And I think that that has a benefit, frankly, in and of itself, that, that low-income parents have the ability to make some of the choices that those of us with money already have. That, to me, is a fundamental principle. You know what happens? She always trying to put everything on the old man. I lived with my father up until right before I went to the 10th grade, and it was strict. Uh, no phone calls after like 9.30 or 10, you need to be in the bed by 10, uh, no company during the week, you must have your homework done before you can watch TV. It wasn't very laid back. Even though I'm not the firstborn, I would be the first one to graduate from high school. and. I think he was kind of, you know, just trying to make sure that I stayed on track and did what I was supposed to do. He just more or less trying to get me to realize that there, that I need to go to college. You need to go to college so that you can do something with your life. You need to graduate from high school. Do we have a volunteer? Ron, your helper? Good job. Okay. Billy, can you make another one? No. Come try. Billy was part of a system that is large, and Billy came to us as a, a student with a physical disability and a low self-esteem. I think you put Billy in a system that's large and he gets lost. I never doubted Billy's intelligence. I knew it was there. Sometimes I was challenged as to how to bring this out of him. I am a firm believer in Gardner's multiple intelligences, and that's what seems to work for Billy. If it doesn't work one way, then I'll try a different way. And eventually the concept will be learned. Good job. He's had his ups and downs, and he's had his defiant times with us, but every time he did, we called him on it. And we called mom and said, you need to come in here because this is what happened with Billy and it's not okay. Parents teachers conferences I go to and I'll, I'll usually get good comments. He sometimes forgets to turn in assignments. That's basically the, the worst thing with him. He doesn't always turn in his assignments. Mm -hmm. He says he does, but the teachers don't always agree. He's a stubborn little thing sometimes. I think he'd make a good lawyer. I, I hope that's the direction he would take. A lawyer and a businessman. He's very good with that. Um, but he wants to be a basketball player. You, I, you have to have something else. Uh -huh. Worth Dean has always gotten good grades, but he's not really applying himself now. He's, he's going through his identity thing. I mean, he's a stable student. I'm not worried about him on any level, but we have to keep talking to him and we have to keep watching him. We focus so much on the children that have extra needs that we kind of lose the really bright kids. They get bored and we're, we're missing. And I have several little Worth Deans around here that you have to really be careful with because we could lose them if we don't recognize that they still need that guidance. In the neighborhood that we live in, there isn't a lot of hope there. But that's why I want them to know something that I never knew in my life. I want them to know that you have potential now. I was the first one in my family that didn't graduate from high school, and it's a stigma, to me it is, to not have graduated. My kids aren't going to go through that. I am not going to not let them graduate from school. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen.
a decade or more of watching 8,000 freshmen become 3,000 graduating seniors. It was that haunting number of 5,000 kids a year. And that's really what drew us into the school choice issue in creating other options, other viable options for parents. The capacity of private non-religious schools was not that great. It was growing slowly, but if we really wanted to give parents a meaningful choice, we needed to have more choices. We had a waiting list to get into the very limited number of seats that we had in non-religious schools. So we needed to expand to the Catholic and Lutheran systems. I remember John and I having some rather detailed debates about the merit of school choice as it related to uh, religious schools, and I was not necessarily on board with that right away. When the Archdiocese is talking about closing a number of inner city schools in my assembly district, I went to this meeting in the basement at St. Thomas Aquinas Church, and I was astonished at what I saw. I, there was not a single place to sit. And I looked at that and I just said at that meeting, I said, no, this is more than just about education. This is about empowering parents. If school choice is going to give, produce this kind of parental involvement, uh, what on earth could be wrong with giving parents these additional options? Supporting school choice isn't always pleasant politically. There's some very strong entrenched interests who make it very unpleasant for any elected official who supports school choice. <laughs> Uh, particularly if you're a Democrat. I knew there were some risks there to me politically, but in final analysis, you're here to make a difference. As I said when I cast my vote on it, I said you're here to not only to stand tall, but to stand for something. And that's what we did. Right away the first day after the court ruled for choice to expand and we we're going to have the kids be able to go to the religious schools, I mean, that same afternoon I'm over here at St. Jones because uh, at that point Sharonda's a, a, an eighth grader and I'm filling out the paperwork because this is where she's gonna go to school and so I mean it's like yes this is actually going to happen and going to St. Jones there were a number of things that she had to confront okay you're silent now please first of all she was not going to be one of the top students in her class. She met kids whose parents had a lot of money and probably could have gone to any school that they wanted to go to. And I knew, you know, going into the situation that she'd probably struggle the first year. We tried to have rigorous standards so that students experience a taste of what they'll get in the future. In Sharonda's case, I hope that she sees that the contribution she's making now was not just an academic exercise, but it's really the first step for her being a vital force in changing the world. My sister, she had her first daughter when she was um, a young teenager. She's 22, she has three beautiful kids, and she always tells me, you know, you're doing something that I can't do. You know, you, you're about to go to college, you know, that's something I couldn't, I never even thought about. I have many kids that go home to empty houses because if you have an education, you can work first shift. If you don't have a great education, you take whatever job is there, often second or third shift. Hi, thank you for calling. This is Lynn speaking. How may I help you? When I didn't see her here yesterday, um, I asked Billy. I said, where was mom this morning? Oh, she, got, she worked late last night. Okay, I have credited your account for the days that you missed. Is there anything else I can do to help you today? Yeah, and I feel you have to constantly communicate with with the children and because she came home last later than expected probably his sleep was interrupted and he um, did not have a good day. Now you got your placeholder now what do you do? 
you got to work at this at two levels. You create the policy that gives people options, and then you got to work hard to make sure that they have quality options. And so the focus then has to be on how do you create good schools. In the city of Milwaukee, uh, if you can't find a school to go to, you're not looking very hard. We have uh, all the public school options. We have parochial school options. We have uh, private school options. Uh, we have choice. We have charter schools. So what happens in this environment is you have a lot of people competing for student population. I think that clearly the creation of these other educational options for parents have forced the traditional public schools to look at what they're doing and to be more responsive to the parents, to give more consideration to achievement. And in fact, I think we've all risen um, because of the competition that now exists in the Milwaukee public schools. When you come to the cyber school and you've got a school full of low-income children, all motivated, all learning every day, it's no longer acceptable for traditional public school teachers to say, oh, these children are poor and hence I can't teach them. The excuse goes away. Now we have examples of schools that are highly successful for Central City low-income children. And traditional schools have to look back at that and say, if they can do it, we have to do it too. With the Parent Choice Program, we have many different models by which parents can, can choose. When you have that, no longer is, is Milwaukee Public Schools a monopoly. That competitive nature has raised the bar for educators in Milwaukee to provide a good product. I think what's occurred over the last eight to nine years is we've had the ability to be innovative, we've had the ability to be creative and change things and have moved forward in a productive, positive way. Well, you're in one of the most socially challenged and one of the most physically dangerous neighborhoods in the state of Wisconsin. You're in a census tract where crime, danger to children, and all sorts of really pretty tough stuff goes on every day. And you're also in a neighborhood where Milwaukee Public Schools and the West Side Academy are helping revitalize and rebuild the neighborhood. This is an MPS school that routinely takes in students who can't read as late as the fifth grade and gets them to grade level within a year and a half here. But it's not just the academic achievement, it's the parent support that's so strong that in a neighborhood that's disintegrating, the school is building new capacity by 300 new students. See, public school districts can compete. We can perform if we want to, but we have to have the right environment. School choice is a critical part of that environment. It's worth remembering that even in the largest voucher programs in the United States, 98, 95% of the students in the city will still be in the regular public schools. So what happens to those students matters a lot. I found that the Milwaukee public schools showed rapid improvement in their students' results. Math scores were growing by uh, six national percentile points a year in my study compared to the other urban schools in the state of Wisconsin which didn't experience the uh, vouchers and they were growing much more slowly at a rate of about one, one, one and a half national percentile points. Normally we expect uh, small changes to occur in response to policy changes and these were much larger changes than I expected to see. I love the independent, I love the religious schools, I'm a strong supporter, but my primary loyalties are where my kids go, which is Milwaukee Public Schools. And I'm very proud of the fact that during the choice era, our enrollment has increased, our budget has ballooned, the total investment in the city of Milwaukee from the state of Wisconsin has, has experienced unprecedented increases, no one thought imaginable, and our children are doing better. People who want good K-12 through education for their children can look at an improving public school system, improving Catholic Lutheran school systems, improving private non-religious schools. They're all focused on getting better because they want to have the parents choose them. Although people say this is all about pressure on the public schools, in my opinion, it also has to put pressure on private schools. 
just because a school is public does not mean that it is bad. Or just because it is private, it doesn't mean that it's good. You have, you have excellent public schools. You have terrible public schools. You've got excellent private schools. You've got terrible private schools. So what you want to do is you want to give people the option to figure out where will my child stand the best chance to get a good education. He says he doesn't like school as much now. He's always complaining that they expect too much out of him. And they do expect a lot of things from him. But he's capable of giving. He's capable of giving it. I stay on his case all the time. He, I'm, I'm sure he's tired of me talking to him about how to improve him himself in school and his actions. Okay, who wants to talk? Leukemia and lymphoma are cancers that arise in the blood form of cells. But it's my duty as their mother to do that, make sure that they're headed for the right track. You know, every parent feels all those yearnings for your kids that you want the best for them and you want them to do their best and you want them to be up to speed but you don't know for sure whether they are. So if we are looking at Billy's test scores, this is really a nice way to compare. We predicted that Billy would score almost to the end of third grade. Mm -hmm. Billy scored way above what they anticipated Billy would score. In high-level skills in math, Billy's performing at the 8.4 grade in level. Math, in math, the math. eighth grade level. You know, wait a second, no, I do this I'm is getting good. upset. Holy crap, I'm really proud of him. You should be. Um, anything that we'd want to work on, this would be the area. His lower level skills are not as high in reading mm -hmm. as his higher level skills. The same thing's happening in math, which says to me Billy is a very analytical thinker. As Billy's thinking of potential for his future, Billy's the kid that could be the engineer. This has to tell you that Billy can be anything he wants. Did I improve a lot? Yes, you did. Yay. Yeah. Social studies has a little room for improvement. We're surprised. School choice gives every kid a face. No longer is it you are just one of a number. You now have a face. Yeah. I'm convinced this is all about building those relationships. And in doing so, having things become a possibility for these kids. I know that your goal was to get a high pass, mm -hmm. right? And the way the math works out, it's possible for you to really do that if you nail the presentation. Okay. Okay. The so biggest change I have seen is kids are saying, I might be something. It's not anymore I'm going to be, that I feel locked in to this is what's going to happen in my future. I now am saying, I might be something. Um, which tells me kids are starting to dream. Ten years ago, if somebody would have told me that I would be part of this, I would have said it would never happen in my lifetime. Um, I am just so impressed that this can be a reality in Milwaukee. There are 100,000 kids in MPS. It's a $1 billion budget roughly $10,000 a kid. The vouchers are between five and $6,000. The some hundred schools that are participating in the Choice Program are educating these kids for less than they are in the public school system. That's not the end of the argument and not the sole focus of it, but it's an important part. School choice is a mechanism. It, it, it is not an end in itself. The, the end is to get excellent education for all children. And to the extent that some form of school choice helps that, then you support it. One thing that poor people don't get a chance to have is a lot of responsibility. And I don't think you become responsible without responsibility. The more situations people are in where they have to show responsibility, the stronger they get in it and the better they feel about taking it on. I don't know where Billy's going to be at 18. Do I think Billy could go either way? Yes, because I think the world Billy lives in is scary. But I think we are giving him the tools to make the right decision. We haven't had a lot of grads come out of this family. 
my mother's children, my brothers and sisters, we have a group of kids who can actually be whatever it is that they want to be. Sharonda Higgins. There are no restrictions um, on her life as to where she can go and, and what she can be. probably learned that high school is tough. You know, when it's tough, you gotta work harder because I'm a short kid, so all the big, I gotta look up to everybody like that. But I gotta, you know, work through it and let them know that I'm here. It takes an educated people to sustain a democracy. So we cannot have a large numbers of low income, mostly children of color, not being educated. This goes beyond whether or not people have some philosophical disagreement with choice, and it has to speak to the question of what are we going to do to educate all of the children of America? Hi ladies, you just made it, you better go quick, the bell rang. Reject the notion that you can't be for a good parental choice program and at the same time be for public education. The two go together. Be pro-education. And that means public, that means private, and you lift the tides of everyone if you take that approach. So reject that notion that you can't do both because you can do both. In Milwaukee, we're doing both. You've just seen the impact of school choice on three families. There are many more like them. This year, nearly 12,000 children attended 103 private schools, participating in the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program. Another 4,600 students have chosen independent charter schools. And Milwaukee Public Schools has responded to these increased educational options. MPS expanded early childhood classes because parents want them. Principals now hire teachers without regard to seniority. Each school controls 95% of its operating budget. Most important, academic achievement has improved. Fears that school choice would hurt MPS have not come true. Real spending is up 24%. MPS enrollment and market share have grown. The dropout rate has declined by almost 50%. Freedom to choose has helped revitalize education in Milwaukee for families and for schools.